Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I am going to the bookstore, probably half price books as well, but we're definitely going to Barnes today because there are so many new releases and I should probably be on a book buying ban right now, but I just cannot resist. It's good for the soul. This week, The Burnout came out, which has been on my wish list for weeks and weeks now. I've been waiting for this one to come out. So I really want to pick it up. It just sounds like exactly what I need in a book right now. The main character is burnt out and that is just exactly how I've been feeling these last few weeks. So I think that it will be relatable. I also believe that it is supposed to be a romance sort of vibe as well, which I am really back into romance at the moment. So I definitely want to pick that up and just check out what else is new. Probably see if there's any like good holiday finds at half price books. I know we are still in October, but I am so ready for Christmas books. And this year I've decided I'm going to do book miss. So I can't wait. Anyways, I'm going to take you guys along with me as we do some book shopping and then I'll give you a haul at the end of today's video. So let's hope we find something amazing. Okay, just now leaving Barnes, I got everything that was on my list, including a Beth O'Leary book. It's the only book of hers that I don't own yet, so I was really excited. And I got the Olivia Rodrigo cover of like the Rolling Stones magazine, which I also was hoping to find. So overall, 10 out of 10 trip. I'll show you guys my haul when I get home, but we are going to 85 degree bakery. I'm starving and I feel like I need a boba. Let's go. Okay, I am back with a haul. This bag is so heavy. I really did not get that many books. I could have gone way crazier because there were just so many on my list, but I did get like newer hardcovers. So also it is the next day. <laughs> and for whatever reason, whenever I let my hair air dry, I get like these Lord Farquaad sort of bangs. I don't know. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna roll with it. I did go to Half Price Books and Barnes and & Noble and I got books from both stores. So I'm going to start off with the Half Price Books books. The first one is The Coworker by Frida McFadden. This book sounds so good and I really enjoyed The Housemaid by Frida McFadden and The Locked Door. So I think this will be a good thriller, but this one is about two women, an office filled with secrets and one terrible crime that can't be taken back. So fingers crossed for this one. This next one I hadn't heard anything about. I honestly don't know if this is an older book. It seems like you know, it kind of has like that newer vibe to it. This is Eliza starts a rumor. There's a quote by Katie Kirk on the back. So I feel like this cannot be current. It says 2020. That was pretty recent. But Katie Kirk says a smart, engaging treat for Big Little Lies fans. The perfect summer read. It is not summer. It says all it takes is one rumor and four lives will never be the same. So 
The main character, Eliza, she starts a salacious rumor and posts it on the local bulletin board and it just kind of like has this domino effect in this community and just kind of messes with all the lives of these four different women. It just kind of sounded like a cute story and like the bonding of these women through all of their different obstacles. This book was 8.49. Oh, there's a quote from Emily Henry on the front. Brimming with charm. That's all she could give us? Okay. Mostly I just thought the cover was cute. Same with this one. This is really why I keep picking this one up every time I am at Half Price Books. This is Emma of 83rd Street. How adorable is that? This one's newer, so this one was $14.39, which is also, I think, what I paid for the coworker. Okay. The best rom-com I've ever read, a friends to lovers instant favorite. This one has a quote on the back that says, witty, wonderful, and the best retelling of Jane Austen's Emma since clueless so i feel like the vibes are gonna be so good so that is my half price haul from barnes i was specifically looking for this rolling stones issue with olivia rodrigo on the cover this shoot is one of my favorites ever so cute let me show you the inside julia fax cameo she is so beautiful it's insane and the art direction for this whole shoot was just really cool like, look at this i am obsessed Look at this look with the hair clips, the dress. It's so good. Anyways, I think she's super talented, super cute. I love her style. So obviously, had to have this issue. It's so cool. I have not bought a magazine in years. This magazine was $11, which I think is so crazy because I feel like magazines used to be like two bucks. Moving on to the books. I got The Road Trip by Beth O'Leary. So this is finally the last book of hers that I needed to complete my Beth O'Leary collection. After I read The Wake Up Call in my last video, I was like, okay, I need to complete my my Beth O'Leary collection. This one says, two exes reach a new level of awkward when forced to take a road trip together in this endearing and humorous novel. What if the end of the road is just the beginning? This is a thick one though. Oh, it's really not that long. It's 380 pages, but I think this is probably the longest of her books. I don't remember how long the no-show is, but I'm so excited to read this one. Let me know if you guys have read it. This one I had not seen before. This is Seven X's by Lucy Vine, and the cover caught my attention. Oh my gosh, there's a Beth O'Leary quote on the back. She said, Seven X's made me laugh out loud. It's fresh, fast-paced, and joyous. Lucy Vine's writing is so warm and funny. Her books are the literary equivalent of an amazing girls' night out. That is what I need. According to a magazine's dating column, there are seven people a woman will date before finding the one. The first love, the work mistake, the overlap, the friend with benefits, the mischance, the bastard, and the serious one. Personally, I have like five out of the seven, but I've found the one, so... It all seems silly at first until Esther realizes each of her exes fits these roles perfectly. Deciding she must have left her true love in the reject pile, Esther resolves to contact each of her exes to find out who was the one that got away. Somewhat similar to X's and O's where she like redates her exes, both to see if she can like rekindle something or to figure out why it failed. It's kind of like in that same vein. I'm so excited for this one. <laughs> It sounds so cute. I also picked up Glossy. This is by Marissa Meltzer. It's basically the inside story of Glossier, the bombshell expose that reveals for the first time exactly what happened at Glossier, one of America's hottest and most consequential startup. It also delves deep into the life of its iconic CEO. So I feel like these books are either hit or miss. Like sometimes they'll be like, oh, this is an expose. You'll never believe it. This is what happened, but then they kind of leave you wanting more. Honestly, Pamela Anderson's memoir. So we'll see how this goes. I don't know. I hope it's juicy, but we will see. Moving on, I have been counting down until this book came out. I've been so excited about it. First of all, the cover, so cute. This is The Burnout. This is 398 pages, so kind of a kind of a big boy. Jojo Moyes from someone else's shoes. I never know if I'm pronouncing their name correctly. There's a quote on the back that says, it's funny, sad, relatable, and brilliantly done. She's the queen of romantic comedy. So I'm really excited. So just reading the inside jacket here, it says, Sasha has had it. She cannot bring herself to respond to another insane, urgent, but obviously not at all urgent, 
email or participate in the corporate employee joyfulness program she hasn't seen her friends in months sex seems like a lot of effort even cooking dinner it takes far too much planning. Sasha has hit a wall. Armed with good intentions to drink kale smoothies, try yoga, and find peace, she heads to the seaside resort she loved as a child. But it's the off season, the hotel is in dilapidated shambles, and she has to share the beach with the resort's only other occupant, a grumpy guy named Finn. When curious messages seemingly addressed to Sasha and Finn begin to appear in the sand, the two are forced to talk about everything. How did they get so burned out? Can either of them remember something they used to love? And the question they try and fail to ignore, what does the energy between them signify? I've been dying to read this one. One, I think because I have been majorly burnt out these last few months where I just feel like I've hit a wall myself. Like I don't really know what I'm doing right now. I'm having a terrible time trying to create. My last video was me literally trying to pull myself out of a reading slump that I've been dealing with for weeks because even my favorite thing, reading, is just not doing it for me right now, even though I obviously just bought a million books. So I'm feeling very burnt out and strange myself. So I feel like this will be relatable, but also have like the cute rom-com aspect to it. I'm really excited to read it. So I will keep you guys updated on how it turns out. Let me know if you want a reading vlog. I say, as I just told you how burnt out and weird I am. Okay, two more. This one, I also had not seen anything about, but the cover caught my eye. This is by Eliza Clark. Same author that wrote Boy Parts. Chilling, brilliantly told story of murder among a group of teenage girls in the vein of the girls and my year of rest and relaxation. Trigger warning this book is a little intense but it says a 16 year old was set on fire by three other schoolgirls. nearly a decade after the horrifying murder a journalist has written the definitive account of the crime drawn from hours of interviews with witnesses and family members and most notably correspondence with the killers themselves the result is a riveting snapshot of lives rocked by tragedy and a town left in turmoil. The book is described as an unflinching exploration of gender, class, and power that raises troubling questions about the media and our obsession with true crime while bringing to light the depraved side of human nature and our darkest proclivities. So yeah, just a little bit heavier than the rom-com stack. But it sounds so interesting. I, obviously, the cover caught my eye and then I read the inside jacket and I was so intrigued that I needed it. So, a little intense. This one also, I'm, I'm unsure about. I have been so on the fence of picking this one up because I've heard so many people recommend it, but just, I don't know. So this is more of like a horror novel. But it says this is a horror-tinged gothic fairy tale about a lonely dress-up shop. Shop? Clerk, whose mother's unexpected death sends her down a treacherous path in pursuit of youth and beauty. Can she escape her mother's faith and find a connection that is more than skin deep? Oh my god, wait. <laughs> the bottom, it's kind of described as Snow White meets <laughs> Eyes Wide Shut. Terrifying. I feel like it could be good. I've heard so many good things that I really hope that I enjoy it. We'll see how it goes. So that's everything I got while book shopping. So many good books. I honestly, I don't know where to start. There's so many good ones in this stack. If you guys have read any of these, let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me. I will see you guys again very soon. Bye.